Hello YouTube, this is Darkon633, back with another Super Sentai review. This time I want to take a look at the Deluxe Ryu Voyager from Ucha Sentai Q Ranger. Now this is actually, so far, the largest mecha on its own that's been released in the toy line up to this point. There will be larger mecha coming in the future. It includes that giant rocket, which for some reason I can't think of the name of at the moment, but this, so far, is still the largest standalone mecha we've received in the line so far, and it's massive. It's about 22 or so inches in length, and it's actually really insane just how large this particular mecha is. We're going to take a look at the box first. The box is also really huge because of that, and it's, it has a problem because of that. It made it extremely expensive to ship, and I find that really unfortunate since... It was a little on the pricey side to get a hold of it in the first place. We have another look at the dragon up on top. And some more of the pictures that we see with the mecha, including how it works with some of the other limbs. And pretty much the same we see throughout the toy line in general. It can actually combine with Kirino to form Ryu Take Kirino, if I remember correctly. But I'm personally not going to be getting that mecha. Anyways, we're going to take a look at Ryu Voyager more specifically now. Articulation-wise, you're not going to get a whole lot. The head is on a joint, and because of the way that the mouth works, you can open it and close. You can kind of swivel these, but that's really towards kind of like the articulation for the mecha mode, although it doesn't do a whole lot for that either. You did the same with the back part too. And the tail is technically articulated because it will actually form one of the parts of the feet. But that's about it. None of the actual hands are articulated, which is unfortunate. And that's all you're going to get with the mecha on its own. It does include its own version of the Ryu Kutama, which actually has a different picture. This version actually features the mecha formation version, unlike the original Ryu Kutama, which had the attack symbol in it. So here's the other version that was with the Yurid Sweater. And as a comparison, here is the two together. There isn't a whole lot of difference, although it seems like the shade is slightly different, but that's about it so far. We're now going to take a look at the mecha once again. So first, we're going to take a look at how it transforms. Basically, what we're going to do is split this down in the middle, and that will form the body. From there, we're actually going to turn these forward on both sides. This is actually in the wrong direction, I apologize. Then we push this leg piece down, if the camera could focus. Remove the headpiece. Turn that leg as well. And snap them together to finish off this so far. Now, since we actually can do the formations, first we're just going to transform Tenbin Voyager. To transfer it into limo, we're actually going to transfer it into its kind of its ship mode slightly. However, it is going to not fully form, since these will actually form the parts of the arm. So we got something like this, and then these just kind of form these side pieces, like so. There isn't anything specific, and it's unfortunate that nothing really tabs in, no matter what you do with this, which is unfortunate. But from here, what we're going to do is... Turn this so that it forms board, and actually these form parts of the hand, which is some kind of claw of some sort, so I apologize that I kind of forgot about that until this very second. And what we're going to do to finish out the transformation, we're going to turn these limbs all the way around until we form these empty gaps. Turn the head, and it doesn't really matter which side you're going to put it, but I'm just going to attach it to here. So, here is one of the limbs, and we're going to do the same for the other side. So, we got Sasori Voyager here. We're just going to midway transform it like this, since it'll actually form a claw-like arm. We're going to plug this. Then, we're going to take the Ryu Kyutama, plug it into the chest. So, we got something like this. And to finish off the transformation, what we're going to do is take this headpiece, form it so that it looks like it's about to eat it, and then it's actually going to plug in up here via a peg on top of its head. So with that, we will now form 
Revoyager. It's a little tricky sometimes to actually plug it in, but once you get it in the correct space, it will plug in. So now we're actually going to move the camera so we can take a better look at Ryu Voyager. Now we have a better look at Ryu Voyager. Now it's actually a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. It seems like the Mecha has a good amount of mass shifting when changing into the two modes and I think that's pretty cool but it is a little bit on the short side. I thought it was going to be a little bit taller. Luckily it's not a whole big deal necessarily a slight nitpick but I think it still did a pretty nice job in the overall design of the Mecha. The back is kind of Boring, but you're not going to get a whole lot on mecha in general, at least in the back of them anyway. Articulation-wise, the shoulders can swivel, but that's about it. You're not going to get a whole lot more articulation unless you want to use the joints within any of the limbs, and that all depends on what limb you put on. The head can't really turn because the piece is attached to the body. You can swivel the legs, but it's not going to do a whole lot since the parts like to get in the way, and you're just not going to have a lot of movement there. And the speed can pivot a bit for that same exact reason. So otherwise, I think this is a pretty fantastic mecha release. In conclusion, if you're a fan of Ucha Senta Q-Ranger, this is definitely a really nice mecha to get a hold of. Obviously, it is a lot larger in the way that it was actually packaged, causing it to be it's more expensive for the shipping, since if they actually formed it within the mecha mode, although it would look awkward since it doesn't have the extra limbs attached to it, I think it would have made the shipping just a tad bit cheaper because of the way that the design of the mecha would actually benefit it in the way that it was packaged. This is okay since it does get packed into the main mode that it is on its own, but it does cause it to become a lot more expensive. So outside of the cost, this is definitely a really nice mecha, and I think Bandai Japan did a fantastic job designing it to toy form, even though it does suffer from the usual Super Sentai limited articulation in terms of the deluxe mecha releases. Now, I didn't mention earlier the actual Q-Tama will also make the exact same sound on the size of Blaster, so there isn't a whole lot of difference here to get that on its own, so there really wasn't a point of showing that off. But it's still really nice to actually have this mecha, and I think it looks really nice in display, and also has a lot of play value if you have other mecha to attach with it. Anyways, I got this with Hobbit Link Japan, along with Koguma Voyager, which we'll look at next, but for now, Please comment and subscribe and check out Hero Club and Hero Taku. Also check out my Twitter, Darkon633, and don't forget to check down the other channels down below. Please check the little bell at the bottom of the screen and receive my content go up as soon as possible. I'm back on more Super Sentai reviews, but for now, I'll be seeing you later, YouTube. Bye.